The main goal of Al-Baqara, or the cow, is to establish our role as the human authority responsible for this planet. The chapter takes us through five main parts that help us understand who we are, how we came to exist, and how to stay on the straight path. In this video, we will look at the first two parts. In the first part, we learn about three types of people that exist. The chapter first starts off with three Arabic letters, Alif, Lam, Mim. Then it says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا للمتقين, Which means this is the book. There is no doubt about it. A guide for those who are mindful of God. God is answering our prayer in the opening chapter, where we ask him to guide us to the straight path. God tells us here that the Quran is indeed a guide for those who are mindful of him. It then describes the first type of people, the believers, as those who believe in the unseen, establish prayer, and give charity. The second type of people are the non-believers, who are open and transparent about their disbelief in God. There's nothing you can show them or say to them that would change their minds. The last type of people are the hypocrites, who are not easy to identify. They are essentially non-believers, who are not open or transparent with their disbelief in God. Instead, they outwardly present themselves as believers, when in reality, they are not. After establishing the types of people that exist, and in the verses leading up to the story of Adam, peace be upon him, God addresses all human beings. He commands us to worship him and him alone, and that he created us to be mindful of him and to follow his guidance. And he created the earth for us to settle and make it our temporary home, and created the sky that brings rain to grow our fruits so that we can survive and prosper. All this to worship him and him alone, with no other partners. These verses establish early on the absolute oneness of God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. God then warns the non-believers of their eventual punishment in the hereafter, hellfire, and promises to reward the believers in heaven. This lays the foundation for the story of Adam, peace be upon him, which tells the story of our origin and how we came to exist on earth. In this story, we are introduced to three kinds of creation, the angels, who are made of light and are obedient by nature and have no free will. The jinn, who are made of fire and have free will, represented by Iblis or Satan. And humans, who are made of clay and also have free will, represented here by Adam, the first human being God created. The story begins with God announcing to the angels his new creation, Adam, peace be upon him and how he will place him on earth as a successive human authority. The angels respond by asking God, will you place someone who will spread corruption there and shed blood while we glorify and praise you? God responds and says, I know what you do not know. God then teaches Adam the names of all things and presents them to the angels and says to them, tell me the names of these if what you say is true. Glory be to you, they replied. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. You are truly the all-knowing, all-wise. God then says to Adam, O oh Adam, inform them of their names. And when Adam does so, God says to the angels, Did I not tell you that I know the secrets of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal and conceal? God is showing the angels how uniquely different Adam is compared to them. God gave Adam intellect and the ability to learn things and acquire knowledge, something the angels do not have. God then asks the angels to bow down to Adam, to honor him as his new creation. They all obeyed God except for Iblis. He was arrogant and refused to bow down to Adam. He saw himself as a more superior creature than this new human creation, Adam. The story then shifts into the future, when Adam now has a wife named Hawa. God says to Adam, O oh Adam, live with your wife in paradise and eat as freely as you please, but do not approach this tree, or else you will be of the wrongdoers. 
Iblis sees this as an opportunity to deceive Adam and Hawa, whom he despises, and over time tempts them to eat from the tree, which they eventually do. They slipped up, which led to their fall from the blissful state they were in, in paradise. God said to them, including Iblis, descend from the heavens to the earth as enemies to each other. You will find in the earth a residence and provision for your appointed stay. This slip up was an important and necessary lesson for Adam and Hawa. They learned that Iblis was their enemy and cannot be trusted. God then inspired Adam with words of prayer to repent for his sin and to ask God for his forgiveness, which God accepted and forgave them. Through this example, we learn that we as humans are not perfect and that we will make mistakes, the same way Adam and Hawa did. But what's important here is recognizing our mistakes and not to be arrogant like Iblis. We should always repent to God and ask him for forgiveness. In the next video, we will discuss the final three parts of this chapter and how it all ties back to the story of Adam and the lessons we learn from this story. Help us create more videos by visiting our website today and contributing to our mission and project. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to access more videos and content.